Welcome to the Master Info Week of the Università della Svizzera Italiana. For the whole week, you will find useful resources such as a welcome from our rector, Professor Boas Eretz, a campus tour, testimonials from both current students and alumni, and an overview of UZI's graduate placement opportunities. You can watch a brief description of our student services and a useful tutorial on how to fill the online application form. Now, you're about to attend a thorough presentation of the master structure and contents. You can ask us any question, academic or administrative related, through the chat below this video or through the form at the bottom of the page. After the presentation, we will answer all your questions during a live session with the master director and the coordinator. Thank you and enjoy. Good morning, everyone. Um, Welcome to the uh, info day uh, for the masters at the Università della Svizzera Italiana. My name is Eiko Maggi. I'm the uh, director of the Master in International Tourism, and I'm going now to give you a short presentation uh, of uh, our program, some insights, hopefully some motivational information that convinces you that it would be a good idea to join our master program. I'm here with the student intern, uh, Viola Kola, and she will uh, later on also uh, talk to you quickly on uh, her experiences as uh, a student. So uh, let's start with our uh, presentation. The uh, structure is uh, very simple. First, uh, the objectives and contents, then how we are organized, what the structure of the program is. And then uh, I will insist quite a bit on the career prospects because, of course, that's uh, an aspect that uh, uh, rightly so uh, is of big interest uh, for uh, future students. And then finally, some formalities, but I guess I will then hand over to Viola to talk about uh, this. So, let's say this uh, program in international tourism is a master's degree in economics and communication, and it's, it's a, a common undertaking of the Faculty of Economics and the Faculty of Communication Sciences here at Università della Svizzera Italiana in Lugano. Um, let's say, if we first look at this house horizontally, then from left to right, you see that we write diverse bachelor backgrounds. Uh, what we mean is we are, uh, it's a base uh, of our concept that uh, you are from different backgrounds, the richness, one of the richnesses of this program is that uh, a class is composed of students with totally different uh, backgrounds. You then go through the program and uh, we will end with integrating um, events like a study tour, a capstone project, uh, an internship or a master thesis. And we will see uh, these things more in detail. If um, we look at a thing uh, vertically, it's just to say like, uh, say we are a very uh, international university, uh, statistically speaking, the most international one in Switzerland. We have a nice teachers mix with uh, teachers uh, from uh, different nations and different backgrounds and different cultures, which of course fits perfectly in the, into the multicultural class environment uh, that we have. We will see this in a second when we look at the uh, origin of our students. We do lots of in-class projects uh, because these in-class projects uh, not only uh, permit uh, students to enrich each other with their relatively uh, different backgrounds, but it also, of course, uh, forms then uh, towards a future where teamwork is becoming essential in any kind of uh, professional context. Um, we have in uh, the program economics and management, we have communication, we have social sciences, we will see the, uh, uh, the composition in a moment. The important uh, thing from this slide to take away is quite simply diverse background, uh, diverse culture, interaction, uh, collaboration uh, that uh, permits you to go out from uh, this program with a very original uh, uh, set of uh, knowledge that you can then apply. More in uh, concrete how we try and fill this concept uh, uh, with our study program. It's a four semester program uh, starting with a boarding semester, then broadening, uh, then deepening, 
and then finally getting to the master's or mastering as we call it. And, uh, and the first semester, it's a lot about the basics of tourism. It's, uh, the, let's say, new media, the tourism tech lab. It's a bit of economics, it's, it's cultural history, international relations, consumer behavior, international intercultural communication. If you look at this, I don't go through the whole list, but it says right from the beginning, we have sort of to get you on board given that you have different backgrounds and hence we have to do a sort of leveling uh, for uh, the students with these different backgrounds in some uh, basics and that's why this program at the beginning is uh, heterogeneous but is very enriching because you will uh, look at very different aspects of the tourism uh, phenomenon. This then permits in the second semester uh, to uh, broaden and to go really now in the context of tourism and study transportation things like aviation, uh, the kinds of transportation, but also tourism planning development, sustainable tourism issue, business travel, etc, etc. As you see also UNESCO World Heritage, where we have a uh, UNESCO World Heritage Chair uh, uh, held by uh, my colleague Lorenzo Cardoni here uh, in, uh, in our university. And in this broadening, you can then start to integrate courses uh, from minors in e-tourism or minors in uh, minor in sustainable deal, uh, management, meaning you can already then try and give a specific profile uh, to uh, your uh, diploma that you will take at the end. And then the third semester is about deepening, about, let's say, the creation of the tourism experience. And I go now go to uh, the whole list again, but you see that there are then more specific things uh, coming in. And finally, the, the fourth semester is then concluding with a study tour, with a tourism capstone, i.e. Uh, a very intensive uh, event where you try and integrate uh, uh, everything that you have learned in, in, in a project, uh, in a sort of overarching project over the, over the uh, three preceding uh, semesters. And then uh, there is an internship if you choose rather to go and make an experience in the industry or a master thesis if you are more interested in uh, some further, let's say, uh, academic uh, analysis that you want to do. Overall, apart from the study program, uh, if you look at it, it's a combination on the one hand of really, uh, let's say, analyt getting uh, analytical tools and analytical skills. And basically the philosophy that we follow is uh, uh, no uh, recipes, but uh, just ways of thinking. So we want to understand you, the tourism phenomenon. It's a master in tourism, it's not a master in hospitality. And uh, you will, uh, if you follow this course, of course, have all these skills to get them uh, into positions in the industry that permit you to uh, uh, use your analytical skills. This is our uh, experience uh, with our alumni. And that's where the career prospects come in. Uh, if uh, you look where our students uh, end up after our uh, program, after having finished uh, our RASA program, it's in communication, it's in business management, it's in new media and tourism, it's uh, some in research and academia and events conferences, in uh, the TOs and TAs, in business consulting, some in hospitality, destination management, business travel, government, NGOs, and so on. So you see, as we take in students with uh, totally different backgrounds, we also let them out into totally different, uh, totally different context or what we would call the, the wider uh, uh, tourism industry, because tourism is obviously made up of all this richness of uh, realities. And so we are very uh, happy and proud that we succeed with our program to uh, take our uh, alumni along uh, uh, different tracks into a professional uh, career. Let's look at uh, just some examples. Uh, of I will not uh, name and describe all the, the alumni we have on these lists. It's just to show you that we have people uh, and you find all these uh, career stories online. Uh, you have the, the direct links here. Uh, you have uh, students that go uh, into, for example, here, Education First uh, uh, Network or uh, in, uh, in, in Cvent or in Airbnb. 
and uh, I don't uh, tell you all the names or you have uh, in, in a Swiss or international context um, different, totally different careers. You have also in, uh, in, at the bottom with Valeria Croce, you have then uh, business, business intelligence. Uh, you have, uh, of course, uh, with here Christian Nedekind, you have, uh, let's say, experience in more in the business travel context than in, uh, in the air transport, in the research with Jan and so on, in, in journalism, in, uh, in uh, destination management, uh, in destination management here as well as in the United States, as you see below, uh, and uh, then uh, other things. So you see also geographically, you can uh, also guess from the names that people come from different uh, countries and they don't necessarily go back to their home country, but, but they go elsewhere, they go out uh, to the world. Um, and that's uh, certainly a very enriching thing we have uh, also uh, careers where, like here, Emerika then uh, create their own business, or also Hasik, uh, and uh, we have uh, other alumni who go far. We have Loredana, who is now uh, uh, associate dean of a business school in Asia. Uh, uh, we have uh, Erika, who is at the United Nations, and so on and so forth. So we have Natalia, who is in BCD Travel, which is uh, she's head of research in a business travel uh, company. And so on and so forth. So I think uh, if you look at uh, at all these careers, uh, then I hope I can convince you that it's worthwhile to join us in our program because it will uh, teach you uh, thinking. It will uh, help you to interact with your colleagues from all around uh, the world, and you will certainly have a multifaceted uh, and uh, multidimensional way of looking at the phenomenon of tourism. With this, uh, uh, the next slide is on the emission requirements. And I guess I leave now uh, the uh, floor to Viola Kola, the student intern, because I, I, it might be that she is much better at explaining this to you uh, than me. Thank you. And really, I'm hoping, you, uh, hoping to see you uh, in the fall in person and not online in our uh, program. Thank you very much. So hello everyone, I'm uh, Viola, as Professor Maggi said, I'm actually a current student and actually uh, also an intern at the Institute uh, of Economic Research here in Lugano. I'm here to give you a more practical view of the Master in International Tourism, but first I wanted to start with the admission requirements. As um, many of you who are attending this info day today are coming from different backgrounds, I wanted to say that uh, actually for our Master in International Tourism, in order to, to apply and actually get admitted, you can have a bachelor's degree from a recognized university in economics, business administration, management, communication sciences, history, law, uh, literature, tourism, languages, and other related fields. So this is what actually offers not only the internationality of the class, but also these different backgrounds um, help you actually in all the subjects as with your colleagues you can collaborate and exchange ideas with one another another requirement for the uh, admission in the master in international tourism is english since the whole program is taught in english you actually need to have at least a b2 english level a bachelor degree taught in english or if you are a native speaker then you don't need um, any uh, any certificates these certificates need to be acknowledged uh, internationally acknowledged language certificates such as toefl and uh, ielts and you actually need to achieve a c1 level by the end of a program and you can attend a language course for free offered here at uzi or you can actually take an exam by yourself regarding the application deadlines which are really important given the current situation the um, board of the university decided to extend a bit the the deadlines this year so for the students who will need or current uh, future students who will need a visa you'll have time until the 31st of may to actually apply for the master international tourism and for all the other students who do not need a visa, you will have time until the 31st of August. We know that many of you are interested in uh, scholarships and uh, for the moment there is scholarship offered by Uzi. 
there are actually 60 one-off um, scholarships that are offered to all uh, the master programs and in order to obtain one of these you can apply and uh, you can win it based on merit so if you have the bachelor grades high enough and you are amongst the top performance then you can of course um, get to get the scholarship in order to apply you can follow the link that you also see on the slide it's application.lu.uzi.ch uh, and now going into more detail about um, practicalities at Uzi, let's say. So we have our social medias. You can follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn and Facebook and understand what's going on at all, uh, all the time here um, in our Master International Tourism. For example, currently, since all the classes are online, um, you can see many videos and pictures of students interacting um, through online platforms with each other and with the professor. Um, many of the subjects are actually now in the phase where students are presenting their projects and it's quite interesting to see how even um, with distance between them they can actually create um, very very interesting and great presentations uh, regarding many subjects in, in tourism, such as the aviation industry or sustainable uh, tourism, which is definitely a part of our masters that uh, we, are, we are proud of. And um, of course, we want that in the future, all of the students are going to be able to shape the sustainable future of uh, travel and tourism. And uh, from my personal experience, I can say that this master is definitely worth it. It gives you a very um, international view on, on this industry and helps you broaden your knowledge uh, furthermore. If you have any questions, you can ask us anything. Um, and of course, you can also contact the study advisor if you have any other questions on practicalities. We really hope to see you in September and uh, we hope that you join us and apply. We are very excited and we are waiting for your applications. And welcome back. Thank you for uh, uh, being here today and attending this uh, presentation of the Master in International Tourism. Uh, now joining me to answer all your questions, uh, the director of the program, Professor Rico Maggi, and Viola Cola, the student assistant of the program. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello, Hello everyone. Hello. Okay, so let's dive into the questions that you sent through the chat. I, before starting, uh, I will remember you that you can send in questions through the chat throughout all this live session. At the end of the session, the chat will be disabled. Uh, but at the bottom of the page, you can find the form uh, this form will stay live online uh, through the coming weeks. You can send questions through the form and we will answer uh, as, as soon as possible in the coming days. So the first question is from Arthur, uh, who's asking, uh, how does it work for the visa? And the thanks beforehand. So uh, Viola, can you answer this? Of course. Uh, so from previous experience, throughout the years. It is very important that students apply way ahead for the visa because due to uh, state regulations, it might be um, difficult or it might require some time to actually get the visa. So that's why we encourage uh, all the students who apply and actually are admitted to start with the visa procedures as soon as possible. Can I possibly uh, probably just quickly uh, add, of course, I understand the questions, uh, uh, the question in the, in the times we are living at the moment, this is even more difficult than normally. But on the other hand, our experience is that in the end, we can always get the students here that want to join us soon on it. So don't give up. This is part of our world. And if you really mean it, you will be here and we will be happy to have you here. Thank you. OK, thanks for the answer. Uh, next, from Francesca, she's sending in uh, a few questions. Let's uh, split them one by one. Can you tell us more about the study tours? Where do they take place? And if the fees for these, for these tours are included in the tuition? Sure. 
So yes, the study tour is of course one of the highlights of, of our program, uh, and we go different places. Uh, we uh, do not uh, decide this now, and so I cannot announce it, because we will, together with the class in the third semester, once uh, there is really a community, we will decide where we go, uh, because it's a lot about uh, the interests of the students, not only in the location destination, but also the interests of the students in the theme. So uh, this uh, February we went uh, to Puglia and to Napoli, so close by, because the students wanted to have as a theme sustainability and heritage, and they didn't want to take the plane. So this is the thing that we decide together. Concerning the, the fees, uh, basically it's included in the in the study fees. There is a very small uh, sort of uh, symbolic contribution that the students have to make, which is 100 Swiss francs. But it's really just to, to a sort of signal that they uh, are also on board. But uh, the cost is 99% uh, as uh, is, uh, financed uh, through the study fee, so it's included, yes. Okay. Then again, from Francesca, the, the second question. The second question is, I see that it's possible to spend a semester in Vienna. Which semester is it and what classes will I take there if it's already, you know, decided or if it's mandatory? Uh, well, of course, you, you, uh, you can spend a semester in Vienna. I would rather say you can compose your studies uh, of tourism, including a semester in Vienna, which implies that once you are here, uh, you will then, uh, for the third semester, which is the next semester of mobility in our program, uh, for the third semester, you will in the second semester talk to us about your intentions and we will then decide about uh, the, the kinds of uh, classes you can take. But there is a lot of uh, freedom for the student to decide what exactly are the courses he or she will take there. So it's certainly an opportunity to enrich the curriculum. Okay, next one is from uh, Andrea. Oops, just a second, because another one came in. Andrea, do graduates only work in the tourism industry or can they reinvent themselves in other industries? And furthermore, how long does it take on average to find a job after graduation? Professor. <laughs> <laughs> well, the uh, average time uh, to find a job. Anyway, normally, uh, according to our uh, statistics, because our services control uh, students after two and a half to five or one or five years and normally uh, almost all students have uh, been finding a job of course we are not now talking about very easy times but yes the job uh, perspectives of our uh, alumni are extremely good exactly because we are not a hospitality program but we are a tourism program and hence, uh, and that links directly to the first part of the question, as uh, students go to many different uh, environments, be it is uh, directly in tourism destinations or uh, be it is in uh, other fields very close to tourism, but also in transportation, in, uh, mm -hmm. in the marketing uh, that are in different sectors uh, that are probably close to tourism, but are in lifestyle sectors and others. So, Let's say the, the uh, let's say the kind of jobs and, uh, and the environments uh, that students take. I think it was also in the presentation we have mm -hmm. is very broad, and so that's why the job perspectives are good. So uh, as usual, of course, if students think that doing our program guarantees to become destination manager in the uh, uh, place where they come from, mm -hmm. then the job perspectives are not that good. But as long as they are mobile and open, uh, they will find uh, good jobs. Okay, perfect. Then a, a, a very practical, a specific questions from, a question from Naomi. She says she's trying to apply, uh, but it's not working. Who can I contact? Uh, I've tried with the administration, but they're not answering. Uh, so the, for technical issues with the online form, there is a specific email, which is in fact online form at usi.ch. I don't know whether you contacted that email uh, or there are two other emails, the study advisor is uh, service email, uh, study advisor at usi.ch or the general in, in email of the university that it's 
info at usi.ch. Uh, I will personally take a look into this uh, as soon as this session is, is finished. The next one is from Amélie. And do you already know the exact date of the beginning uh, of classes next academic year, I think? Do you want to take this question or can I answer this? No, you answer, right? Okay. Uh, the, the new academic year will start uh, September 14th this year, um, which is, of course, a Monday. Uh, and the thing is that we know the date, the starting date, uh, but we are not uh, yet sure whether we can uh, start with the full classes uh, uh, you know, in, in person here, uh, given the, the coronavirus out outbreak. We will keep all uh, uh, interested and uh, uh, students and applicants up to date uh, with all the news that we will receive. Um, then the next one, uh, questions are pouring in. It's from uh, Kari. Kari, I think it's pronounced correctly. The name is how feasible is it for a student to, to do a PhD post uh, Master of Arts in International Tourism at UZI? Professor. Yeah, well, uh, feasible as uh, the verb implies depends also on the candidate. So basically, yes, we have, uh, let's say, uh, in the, uh, the pro we have no, uh, we have no program mm -hmm. that uh, gives a title uh, in tourism, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll have PhD, we have PhD programs in the two faculties that are par participating in this master in the Faculty of Communication Sciences of Economics. And hence, either it will be a, a PhD in economics applied to tourism or a PhD in communication uh, applied to tourism. It's uh, uh, in, in, in Switzerland, basically, university uh, program, uh, the PhD programs with few exceptions uh, are based on uh, um, a student, a PhD student having an employment mm -hmm. in the university as an assistant of a course or of, as an as a assistant in a, in a research project. And so, yes, it's feasible, and of course, it depends very much then on, let's say, the interest and the, and the qualifications. Right, perfect, thoroughly uh, detailed answer. Uh, the next from Roberto, is it possible to spend a semester abroad? Uh, we already uh, went into this a little bit, but do you have something to add, maybe? Yeah, I think it's important to be clear, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, if, you, if you join us here in, uh, in Lugano, then for almost all students, this means already to go abroad. Right? And of course, we have our idea about our own program, own program and semester abroad means going uh, basically at the moment to Vienna, to Modul University, and we are now working uh, to have other partners. But basically, it's of course uh, uh, an entire program that you want. Uh, we want you to do, and so yes, you can go abroad. But at the moment, this is limited to Module University in Vienna. Okay. The next from Perrin, and uh, it's uh, a, a question that goes like this: How does the September 2020 intake look so far? <laughs> kind of a provocative uh, question, probably. It's okay, I can answer it. Uh, it's looking very good, actually. We have already uh, 24 students that are uh, accepted and many applications that are coming daily. Um, let's say half of them international and uh, half of them are Swiss, so we are very happy. Mm -hmm. Also with the level of students that uh, are applying, they're top students uh, and uh, they have graduated with um, um, very good uh, results in their, in their bachelor's degree, so uh, we're very happy about that. And also the different fields that they are coming from uh, will help and make the class uh, much more um, um, interesting, also the group the community they will learn a lot more from one another okay uh, maybe it was not so provocative i mean it's uh, it's a legitimate question given the situation we are we are now facing in fact there's another question from uh, someone who didn't put in the name that it's how do you think the current crisis will change the tourism industry are you going to change the curriculum so i think some in uh, uncertainty uh, at the moment uh, 
is is of course uh, uh, you know legitimate, professor. No, that's that's a super question. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I'm happy to say that we always, since the start, had the philosophy that was uh, no recipes, just mm -hmm. ways of thinking. So our program is based on understanding and then taking action. It's very much about tools, intellectual tools, mm -hmm. and uh, and then applying them. So we have lots of practical things, but we don't sell, let's say, uh, standard solutions. And hence, in this respect, I'm, uh, I'm, I don't think we have to uh, change the curriculum. Mm -hmm. Of course, the, the wait, we will now see what we can do, because planning in university is not too flexible. But we will see what we can do, especially with guest lectures, online mm -hmm. guest lectures eventually, which are totally to the point where we can then react to current trends without changing, let's say, the basic competencies that you need in any situation. We have already crisis management now in. Mm -hmm. We have already uh, many of the tools you need. But certainly it's a super legitimate question and uh, we will certainly uh, consider how we can react. Perfect. And uh, let's go back to another question from from Kari, who already sent one. And it's a, is it possible to work part time during masters at Uzi in order to support my living? Well, yeah, this is a classic. Uh, I, I I tend always to uh, to respond sort of in a typical economist's way, saying if you can do can do calculations, you should either study or work. Now, of course, I don't want to be cynical. It is possible, but difficult. And it is difficult, uh, uh, not so much because I'm such a bad guy, but, but because uh, the, uh, the program is uh, most teachers foresee uh, uh, group works mm -hmm. and uh, class integration and learning from each other is uh, a lot of dynamics. So we tend to have normally one, sometimes two students per class and uh, it is often the case that they take a semester or so longer than the others to finish the studies because they, they have to get organized. But it's basically possible. It's certainly not the best solution. Mm -hmm. But we know that some people quite simply have no choice. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then and, uh, we have a few more questions. And one from the, the next one is from Nina. Have you had past American graduate in this program? Has it been easy for them to find jobs, sponsorships after graduation? Uh, yes, we have had quite some uh, Americans uh, through the years. And uh, I now um, uh, don't have the statistics here. What I remember is sort of three, four, five of them who all have super jobs back in the States. Mm -hmm. right. I would, no, there is one, uh, there is one student from a class from, what was it, 12, 13 probably, and she is now working here in Lugano together with her husband, they have created a company. Uh, and so there is certainly, it's possible, uh, about the majority, I would say, of US students go then back and let work there. Uh, in, in destination management, in super jobs, mostly uh, either on the east, uh, east Coast or on the West Coast, not in the Midwest. But there is one in Milwaukee uh, for Sydney. Okay, thanks for the, for the answer, Professor. Eleonora is asking, do you also focus on the cultural part of tourism? Of course. Of course, we focus on the cultural part of tourism. We actually have uh, uh, a course dedicated entirely on that cultural history uh, of uh, tourism. We also have uh, many courses dedicated to the uh, UNESCO heritage. So uh, that is definitely a major, a major part of our uh, of our program. I, I totally agree, though. Uh, I mean, it's clear it's uh, culture in this region is a very generic term, and as Iola rightly said, it's then translating different aspects. We have also a course on architecture and tourism. So, uh, and of course, in the whole sustainability bit, there is uh, the cultural aspect. In. Okay, thanks. Next one from uh, Marta. What kind of extra hour activities are there? I read that there are opportunities to visit and explore different kinds of cities, such as Venice, if I recall correctly, as well as participating to conferences. Can you talk a bit more about this? 
Yeah, sure. Uh, then uh, Viola, you compliment me. So, um, <laughs> apart from the study tour we have already been touching upon, yes, we have excursions. It depends on uh, on the classes. Uh, the Venice that uh, has been mentioned uh, by uh, uh, the uh, student, I have forgotten the name. Uh, sorry about that, Marta. Uh, the Venice is a visit in the in the context of the uh, uh, course on architecture and tourism, mm -hmm. and it's, uh, it includes then a visit to the Biennale of Architecture, etc. So, it is uh, certainly sort of a very short three days uh, excursion. Uh, then we go yes to one uh, a professional conference in in, uh, in business travel that opens uh, the eyes uh, and the minds of students to a totally different reality from what we normally think about in tourism, i.e. the whole business travel, be it mice or be it business to business travel. And then uh, there is uh, there are also some other excursions uh, uh, that we have. But basically, yes, we have a lot of these things. Besides that, we also have uh, excursions that happen um, while the, the class is happening, so we can start, for example, with the first hour of the class happening in class, and then uh, we spend the rest of the day visiting, uh, for example, the LAC, which is the cultural center uh, here in Lugano, or uh, in the course for small and medium enterprises, uh, we go to the um, uh, Tamborini Winery, which is a small um, enterprise here in Lugano, and it's very interesting uh, to understand not only the, the, the big companies, let's say, but it's very interesting and um, fundamental to understand the small and medium enterprises. So these excursions also help in this aspect. Especially if it's a winery, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, next, next, next time I will join you, if you want me. Uh, <laughs> So You're the welcome. next one is from Matt. Is that the lack of specific practical skills normally awarded from specialized specialized school of tourism pose a problem in order to get a job? Uh, an interesting question. Sure, uh, the answer is no. It doesn't uh, pose a problem, right? We, because we do not do professional education, right? Yeah. Uh, so, of course, what is normally happening with this kind of, uh, let's say, education that you have in our master is that you enter it somewhere, of course it depends on the context, but normally in a lower middle management position, and then you will uh, get uh, on your career path uh, there. But you, you are hired because of the analytical competencies. Mm -hmm. But when I continue to say that, uh, I have to insist that we have a lot of applied things in our program, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, group works, field works with companies, uh, works uh, on on a specific task. We've ended the program with an integrative uh, capstone project where mm -hmm. the students have again to work on, uh, let's say, practical problems that come to us from outside. So it's a sort of combination of the acquiring the tools and then applying them and hence being ready to get in. So it's sort of a normal exit strategy for let's say non um, let's say non business master so that i have to insist we are not a business school offering let's say um like in hospitality school something right. that is your jobs will be one of these five right? right perfectly clear and then the next is about the average age of the student uh what is it yeah, based on statistics it's around uh 25 26. Perfect. Then, the, then we have two more questions and we are approaching the end of, of our time for this session. It's another one from Perina. As I have to take extra credits, is there a rule with the classes I can choose, a list perhaps, or can I take classes in any of the master's programs? Uh, so, uh, I know Perin, I've actually uh, talked to her, so I'm glad that she's following um, this uh, this info day. Um, she's talking actually about uh, the students who are coming from applied universities who actually have to take uh, 30 ECTS. So, by the end of the program, uh, they will have 150 ECTS. 
And this 30 uh, extra ECTS, uh, usually what our students do is that they do both minors, the minor in e-tourism and the minor in sustainable management. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to that, students can do both the internship and the thesis, because in our program, you can choose between the internship and the thesis. And then, of course, they can choose uh, any other, um, let's say, interesting subject from them in the other masters. But of course, we encourage them to think um, to think uh, in, in a big picture, let's say, mm -hmm. because either all the classes from the other masters that they want to take, they need to complement the, the, the tourism program and also their, their own knowledge. So um, they can choose from different uh, classes in masters, they can do both minors or they can do both internship and the thesis. Okay, just to be clear, we don't, uh, we don't impose uh, anything, right? On these mm -hmm. 30 credits but we just recommend and we tell you normally it's that they do this you are free to do anything else but of course the other courses should also be uh, courses that are being taught in english right okay now the last question uh, that we received it's from evan he says good afternoon first i'm currently currently completing a bachelor of science in tourism management at the University of Applied Sciences in, uh, in Valais. I am wondering in which ways the Master of International Tourism could help me to pursue and improve my skills. Maybe the same situation of Perrine or similar, right? Yeah, sure. I, I mean, uh, the thing is that uh, first, uh, of course, uh, old man's comment, you never finish learning. Second, uh, the um, the thing is that uh, what uh, what you do in ballet is uh, there are some overlaps, but basically it's rather on the bachelor uh, on the bachelor level, and hence some general competencies. So there might be some courses that you say, well, I already know a lot, but there is a lot of things that are uh, really then taking you further. By the way, I don't know. Apart from the special situation that it is uh, applied sciences. We have many bachelor students from universities, especially in Italy, who did also also three years of tourism studies. Oh yeah, I missed I missed I think one question before, uh, and Marco is uh, yeah. kindly resending this. Uh, thanks. I read that it's also possible to start in the spring semester. How would it work then with the study program? I know. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, yes, it's possible. I confirm. We have uh, had uh, last uh, spring, we had uh, four or five students who started in spring. And then, of course, in the, in the second semester, um, uh, so in the, the second semester of presence here, so the fall semester, you will go back to the first semester. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, you will probably already try and uh, have a few things from the third. So. It's really a programming issue, and there are some students who successfully finish, uh, otherwise it might, makes no sense to offer it, who finish in time. And there are some who then say, okay, but I feel like attending one semester. <laughs> but it's possible, and uh, normally it works the other way, you want to add something. Just uh, that the sequence of the semesters basically would, would be the second semester first, then the first one, the fourth one, and the third one. This is how it works just so you can have a better, uh, when you see the study program, you can understand how it will work. And probably to say it works uh, from content wise, of course, it implies mm -hmm. that you have uh, a lot of contact with the classmates because sometimes you need things that they already have uh, been learning and you don't have, right? Because, uh, and then uh, it's normally our experiences that it works because uh, there are not all classes who uh, uh, assume that you already have been uh, doing other courses, but those who do normally, this is sort of uh, solved in the class context. And either way, the first year is more introductory, and then on the second year we go more in depth, so it shouldn't be any problem. Okay, two more questions arrived, uh, uh, and let's try to to answer all the questions we're receiving. And the, this one is, how easy is it to find an internship during the master program? Is there any kind of support from Uzi? Actually, we have uh, the Career Center here at Uzi, who is always posting uh, internship in the online uh, job bank, and students can definitely apply there. Uh, besides that, of course, the 
program coordinator Eva Broegop and also the uh, program director Professor uh, Manti uh, may receive certain uh, offers from uh, people that they have in their network and uh, of course these are shared among our students. Can I, can I add on this that the best internships in, in view of a career and a success are those who were not easy to find and that have not been offered by a service, but that you have been uh, finding because you said, I want absolutely to do an internship in New York or in Kuala Lumpur or whatever you want. Right? So uh, we have many students who know exactly where they want to do their internship and they fight for it and they have it. But yes, there is the support, there is the service and normally it's not an issue. Okay, last question. It's from, again from Carrie, who is asking uh, uh, and following very carefully the presentation is how do international students usually fund their masters and stay in Lugano? I don't know. No, ask I, can, all, ask I, can answer, I can answer. Um, <laughs> if you go basically on our website, you can see that there is a section about fees and grants. And at the moment, you will see that you have um, uh, one off um, scholarship from, uh, from the university for which you can apply. And it covers uh, the first semesters for those uh, students who actually uh, will, will get the scholarship. And just remember, in order to apply for the scholarship, you need to be admitted. But uh, other, other than that, uh, there are also other uh, scholarships offered by um, uh, private uh, institutions. And you can find that under the section uh, fees, fees and grants. But also look um, on, on the state, um, on the government pages of, of your own country, they also offer uh, scholarships, as far as I know. So be creative and think a bit out of the box. Uh, you can find ways to, to, to fund your, your master's for sure. Okay, uh, all the participants who received an answer uh, are thanking uh, uh, Professor Maggi and uh, Viola for their thorough responses. Uh, we went through all the questions. I thank you for, for participating and attending this presentation. I'm sure that the, the answer has solved a lot of your doubts. And uh, Professor Maggi, do you have some uh, final remarks? Yeah, yes, I hope. Yes, thanks a lot for uh, joining the meeting. Um, uh, thanks for all, uh, all the, the questions. I hope we have been answering them. Uh, I, I think uh, we should just be uh, clear on one thing, and that is the time is at the moment totally strange, uh, crazy, we don't know what is happening, but this is no excuse not to make plans on the country, and it's very important that you remain optimistic, and uh, we, in one way or the other you will go along uh, uh, on your career path, and I'm sure we can uh, help you along this. So just stay uh, well optimistic and join us, of course, in September. I think we will start in September. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks again to uh, Viola as well. Uh, from me, it's a, it's a thank as well and goodbye.